Right, we're back. It's okay. It's still chocolate, guys. There's a lot of people. For the moment, I can't move because I'm sandwiched in either side. The troop is cool as a cucumber. I didn't actually yet take a look at which horse it is. I did take a picture of the hoof, uh, and I'll try and name the horse for you all in a minute. Okay, so we've got a bit of space. People have started to move. God, I was completely jammed in there for a second. And it is packed here because of the uh, post palace by look. That's uh, along the front of the horse cars this morning. Now, the hoof, people, let's have a quick look. Mm. I'm going to look through all of the images, guys, of the hoof number. I've got an idea of which one it is, but I'm not absolutely certain enough to announce it yet. No idea why you use flash when uh, the entire weather pattern in London today is a flash. And there goes the pit hasn't frozen. Some people really do spend that long just standing there. The uh, troop over here is probably thinking, like, oh my good lord, there are so many people. I can't even get to the horse. <laughs> Luckily, he's tall and can see over the crowd. King's Mounted Bodyguard, actually, some of the tourists are saying, which isn't incorrect. I mean, it is, uh, it is a bodyguard of sorts, officially called the King's Lifeguard, not the regiment. Our sort of cavalry mounted regiment is the King's Lifeguard when on duty here all Oh, there we are. Get out of the box. Oh. <laughs> We're just trying to figure out which language that was, folks. Anyone know? Pop it in the comments, please. It sounded, I was thinking of Polish, but then later I was thinking you actually know. It sounds more like maybe uh, Bosnian or Serb Croat. Okay, so the trooper did at that point. I think we got his first ever uh, verbal get out of the box. So that issue that I referred to in uh, in part one, folks, of whether or not the horse should be used to drive the tourist back, it's a tricky one. On the one hand, I don't think it's necessarily a problem, but on the other hand, it could be a huge problem. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Right, I'm in the yard, folks. I know I said I wasn't going to come into the yard, but... But the yard is quite busy as well. With uh, 
inquisitive young women who want to find out what's behind the stable doors. In other words, possibly a husband, but who knows? Oh, one second. Okay, so we've got a little bit of monopolization going on at the front, uh, which is not really a surprise. It happens here quite often. Second. Some people have already given up and, uh, and moved on. Which language do you speak? I've never heard this language before. Which, which language? Like, where are you from? Like, which language? Oh, it's Bulgarian. Ah, I thought it was Polish. No, I, I'm not Polish, I'm English, but I was thinking that you, it sounds like you're speaking Polish, but it's Bulgarian language, yeah? Because Bulgarian has a lot of the same words as Russian. Polish is different. How do you say thank you in Bulgarian? Yeah. Like, how do you say thank you? Blagodaria. Blagodaria. Oh, Blagodaria. Yeah. Ah, okay. You know, Bansk in Bulgaria, Bansk is Kids Center. Uh-huh. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, hey, thanks guys. Okay, that's interesting. So I wasn't a million miles off, but then again, I wasn't right either. Bulgarian, uh, not a language we heard here, sorry, often in London. Uh, half the guys couldn't speak English. I was asking them, and they'd look at me like, I can't understand you. Gosh, there must be a pretty long shift uh, for this trooper. Now, bear in mind, in the first part, this trooper was here. So this is hour two for the Chitsman today, with an absolutely huge number of people crowding around the front of the arches. No one being rude or disrespectful anyway, not that I've seen yet anyway. But goodness gracious me, it's a busy one. Let's have a look at the other side. This will not be a full length part two guys, it's more of a, a brief addendum to part one. Now why is there an addendum? Well, like I said, we saw uh, I'm not I'm not filming you. <laughs> Lifeguard. See you. Lifeguard? No, I'm a blue and raw. God, how did I not know that? <laughs> well, and you, and you blues and raw, so you don't look like you're just in. Eh? I say you. I've never, never seen you here before. Oh, yeah, I've just been posted a couple of weeks ago. Out from Bullford? Yeah. Yeah? Is that good or bad? <laughs> oh, it was the only job I chose. <laughs> Are you going to go to ceremonial soon? Uh, I was out there today. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. On the, on the three ball of the goal commander, so. Ah, okay. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Wait, so you're Corporal of Horse? Yeah. Ah, so you're... Are you Dan Chapman's replacement? Uh, no, I'm Glenn Denning's uh, replacement. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeez, you know quite a bit about them, eh? I mean, probably more than I should, but I keep it to myself. <laughs> Why? Because it's important to be respectful of the work that you guys do here. Is Fair it enough. not? Appreciate it. But what do you prefer though? If you had a choice right now, boxman, gatesman, chitsman, you personally. If you if you were back as a trooper as opposed to a corporal of horse. Oh, I'd probably say a boxman. I mean, you change every hour as opposed to standing on your feet for two hours. Yeah? Yeah. It's funny, South African? Yeah. Ah, interesting. When I was looking at the front, when the trooper changed over a little while ago, yeah. trooper in this box, trooper F, I'll only say it, trooper F. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've ever seen him on the horse. Is that his? Oh, no. Yeah. Has he ever been on the horse before? To the, I'm not, I don't remember ever seeing him on a horse. Oh. Please are coming over, guys. Uh, being a little bit. So what? Uh, this she'll be changing over uh, one. Yeah. And the horses as well. The horses come every hour. They also come. Oh yeah, sorry. One second, folks. Uh, police are now over in this corner. Uh, a little, a little bit too busy. A little bit too, uh, too many people crowding around the archways. So on and so forth. One, sorry. In half an hour. Five minutes. Oh, here goes another chap. I don't understand how they don't get it though. To be honest, now. Well, unless that is a chain, isn't there? She needs to be able to move around. Somebody mentioned, and I did confirm with, with someone else in the regiment, that probably historically the first time there have ever been twins in the Blues and Royals and on at the same time. I know they're not on the same time now, but last week the uh, two no, twins yeah, were on. It was uh, a couple of twins um, before I came. Uh, uh, guys or, or girls? A couple of guys, Saffa boys. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Um, and then... 
they were the, they were the last ones in the Blues anyway. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it was 2006 they would have been here. Okay, way, way before my time. Well, I would have thought they'd been before your time as uh, well. Uh, <laughs> How long have you been in the Blues? Uh, 20... Nearly 20 years. So you've seen it all, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I mean, you, I guess you've done ceremonial here before. In, in that twenty years, you've been on ceremonial here at Horse Cards. Yeah. Compared to the last time that you were here on ceremonial, how much busier? How ridiculously busy is it it's these days? It's crazy. I walked out there before, and there was a guy there. <laughs> there was two of them standing there with three cameras. Exactly. Yesterday there was a guy. Not yesterday, the day before. There was one guy out there. He had like a whole setup, and he had like about three phones, and I, like I don't he had get like it. Four I'd... different cameras going yep. on. I, I personally don't understand it. I think one is enough. Sometimes one's even too much. Yeah. Uh, the more kit you've got, the harder it is to get out of the way, for example, when the gatesman is uh, is on the move. Yeah, I mean, he was a bit, uh, a bit like you with your, your tripod. It was, it was not like that thing. Exactly. Uh, it was just on, on one stick that looked like he'd made it himself. It was, it was all joined together, so all the cameras pointed in the same direction. It's funny because a couple of days ago on my videos, people were saying, and I was mentioning that it was a surprise. It wasn't you, it was another uh, corporal of horse that was out and about, that it's been quite a while since there's been a, a public-facing corporal of horse, pretty much since, since uh, corporal of horse chaplain finished up here. Are you okay. going to be very sort of publicly visible with the with uh, answering yeah, questions mean, and stuff? Yeah, I'm happy to answer if any, anybody's questions. Somebody was very, very close to the uh, gates woman, weirdly enough. I'm not sure if it was this guy. Yeah. Weird, no? And, uh, well, there we go. It's funny, I kind of speculate a lot on what's going to happen when it becomes the case that there are more people filming than there are tourists. That, yeah. that, that point is approaching, isn't it? It would appear. Well, I, was, yeah, I was yeah, eight years ago, and it seemed like there was maybe one camera to two people or something like that. Yeah. Now it's. Every single, every single person you see has got a camera. And yeah. Some of them have got multiple cameras. Exactly. Uh, it's, We're it's trying crazy. to have a private conversation. You don't need to film us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. It's. It was the uh, midget over there, guys. Social media. Which, which is fine. If people do it respectfully, and they, you know, they, they, they take the time to understand the purpose of the King's Lifeguard yeah. the fact that this is not a tourist attraction although it does attract tourists yeah, yeah. but some of the people here are so incredibly disrespectful it is just it, the mind boggles no? Come on, compared to when you started it's, it's a different world here entirely yeah it's uh, it's crazy but I mean it takes, takes all sorts to make the world doesn't it so yeah. you know, not everybody's going to be respectful and nice and easy it's, you're going to get your people that are going to make fun out of what we do but that, guy, that gentleman there that's 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 a that's a reason uh, and quite occurring problem um I've, I've spoken to some of the community leaders about that and they've already had a chat it doesn't happen anywhere as much as it used to yeah but i think that's, that's partly good. because they were they were spoken to and that's uh, good because it's, it's just wrong yeah if it was if the tables were reversed which is how some of the israeli tour guys explained it and for example i or you south african british or anyone went and behaved in a very similar way with the idf or at the whaling war yeah what would happen we'd be in the shit wouldn't we <laughs> massively yeah, be... i think it was that that sort of uh, that made them understand it but it's yeah it's a great thing to have you know an, an nco out next to the crowd i've never seen the corporate force in his cameras either in the, in the, even in the good old days yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me so much uh, being out and about, sitting in the in the office all day. It starts to get a bit uh, uh, depressing just watching cameras. I don't know how people do it. But you blues, though, have always been much more friendly and sort of engaging with the public, and no disrespect, guys, anyone watching, than the lifeguards. Yeah. Uh, they're a little bit more reserved in, in mixing, certainly the, <laughs> the NCOs, are they not? I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> no comment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's a um, fair point. It's yeah. a fair point. Um, well, a lot of the uh, videos that I see on social media are, are, are laugh cuts. Yep. Um, 
yeah, so, I don't know. On the subject of videos, I'm guessing, uh, I'm not presuming, I'm going to guess, you, you know the channel. No, I've not, not seen that. Is that your channel? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really glad that you don't know it, in fact. This, this is our first conversation without even knowing which channel that I run. Okay. Because I, I try to be respectful and knowledgeable, educate people about what's going on here. At the same time, if tourists are being super rude, I will jump in. Yeah. Why not? Worst, worst thing that's going to happen, I'm going to get a slap. I think it's a price worth paying, though. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on <laughs> and no comment. Depends who's going to slap you, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to, <laughs> it's only if I think that something is so bang out of order that, you know, if, 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 if for example, it were a relative of mine at work and somebody was coming in laughing, getting in their face or whatever, yeah. I think that's a bit much. So let's swap yeah, the yeah, camera absolutely. around. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just one of those, you know, if, if you deserve something, then you're going to get it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come, isn't it? Yeah. I take it to be uh, the same way, especially, to be honest, when it's like large groups of sort of chavvy teams surrounding one of the, the, the more petite lady gods, that, that for me has always been a bit of an issue, when they're taking the piss because they know she can't speak and it makes it worse in my mind that it's, I, okay, they're all troopers, they're all even and equal in rank yeah. but it's still, you know, strip away the uniform, it's still a lady and the lady should be respected, as simple as that, it's my you know, and you as a South African gent I'm sure would agree. Yeah, absolutely it's just a whole disrespect and yeah, they're working hard and a lot of people don't understand how much work it takes to uh, get into the, the kits that they're in. That's the thing, get isn't it? Get into the state that it's in. Uh, and that's, so that's sometimes the annoying thing. It's, um, nobody, like you guys don't really get to see that much. Uh, that side of things, like how much effort it takes to get there. And, I was fortunate uh, last year, um, obviously if you don't know the channel, you wouldn't know this. Last year I was in barracks filming the Elizabeth Cup prep. Okay. So that really opened my eyes personally yeah. to how much work goes in with these ladies and gents getting not just themselves ready but the horses yeah. to make them that gloriously shiny and spectacular. Yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, weeks and months those, of work. Those boots when I used to wax them myself it used to take me about 12 hours. <laughs> I was, I was so slow. Yeah, people, uh, people have no clue, do they? Just how much is involved behind the scenes to make this, the public facing side, the ceremonial side of the regiment, what it is. Yeah, 100%. One question, what is the key factor for you as a corporal of horse determining whether somebody will be a boxman or the gatesman chitsman? Because obviously the prestigious post is at the front. Uh, it's actually uh, completely at random nowadays. Is it uh, really? No, it's... Uh, it used to be done off points, uh, but we're not allowed to uh, actually do it anymore, so it's completely random. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, everybody's chosen uh, where, they, where they go, and over the weekend we'll, we'll continue swapping and swapping all that, so we, even the people in the, in the chits do get to go in the boxes. Otherwise it wouldn't be fair, really. Uh, yeah, it does, it does make sense. Everybody's going to put in different amounts of effort, or somebody's going to be better at doing kit. Uh, so, if uh, somebody was ended up in the boxes because their kit was better, you know, then uh, the person in the chits is you know, just going to be stood there the whole time. But that's not allowed to happen anymore. So, okay, that's interesting. Uh, you know, if uh, Trooper Hannah over there did her kit better and then she ended up in the chits, but she her kit was better than the guy in the box, it's like, well, what am I? putting so much effort in for if I'm just going to end up standing in the chits all the time. That's a very good point actually. Um, and when it comes to the assignment, when the horses are taken out of the stables in the back, is there any sort of logic to who goes on which one or is that also purely oh, random? That's, that's done uh, back, in, um, back in camp. Okay. Uh, that's done by, uh, by a spearman or a riding instructor um, and they'll try and match like, the ability of the, uh, the rider to the horses as best they, best they can. Okay, that makes sense. It's not always uh, ideal, but they do, you know, do, their, uh, do their best to get the, the harder horses, the, the, the more... Uh, the, Problematic. More, more, yeah, the more difficult pencil. horses to <laughs> the better riders. And the, uh, horses that are a bit more like couches, you know, will literally just follow and not do anything. Uh, in your experience, do the troopers actively want to ride Ormond? Because it makes for an easy time in the box as he deals with the tourists or 
<laughs> yeah, the su almond, yeah, the, the super nippy one. Yeah, I don't know, sometimes it can be annoying, like the horse constantly like, flicking its head around and yeah. checking on its, uh, on its reins and biting its bits. Uh, it can be it can be quite hard work when it comes to that sort of thing after, after a while. Um, but yeah, I particularly like the videos when uh, the horses are quite cuddly with the, the tourists, the, yep. the, the people. It's, it is it's quite nice to see and then you get like little little kids and the kids are like oh crap and the horse is just like you know really gentle and they can tell it's you know only a small person and they can just sense that you know, their innocence it's that and i've also noticed the horses seem to be very much aware of when somebody that has a special need or is disabled or something else yeah. goes they're, they're so much more gentle i never ever have seen in almost two years of filming somebody in the chair or with difficulties going up being nipped by a horse they, they've got to know sort of instinctively that you know this person who is coming up yeah, yeah. in a chair for I example spoke to, I spoke to my girlfriend uh, who's uh, also got horses and uh, she's like yeah 100 percent she can their horses can smell your fear and all the the rest of the stuff. Hello boss. Makes How sense, makes sense. Yeah, not bad, good. Probably oh, could get me going there, isn't it? Sorry. I'll put it on your bag, I'll put it on your bag. It's a sign of I will get out of your face. Pleasure to meet you. What's you your too. name? Me uh, too. Murph. Murph. Pleasure, Murph. Thank you yeah. for talking to me, yeah? No problem. Good to see you in about boss as well. Yeah, cut. Looking, uh, looking, uh, very good. Looking hot. Yeah, for hot. Thank you so much, yeah? Cheers. Cheers. What an absolute stand-up guy, folks. 20 years in the Blues and Royals. Been on ceremonials, seen it all. Massive, massive respect to Merv. I'm not gonna stick the camera in his face. He knows I was recording, that was not done surreptitiously. What a pleasure that was. How glad am I that I stood around and captured a part two. I'm not even gonna bother getting back in the huddle, back in the throng of things, folks, because you know what? Nothing's gonna be better than that chat with Merv. What a lovely chat. Massive respect to the Blues and Royals Corporal of Horse. When he's out any ceremonials, guys, uh, I will get a picture of him. I'll pop it on Instagram. Uh, but in the meantime, massive thanks uh, and respect. Respect to Merv. Uh, thank you for your time. Guys, back soon. Bye for now.